I see everything. Traveler and Paimon? <sighs> what a fantastic night! I'm still immersed in all the happiness and joy, like a candle floating on water. So are we, and that's why we're here to talk with you. Is there anything you want to know? After recent events, the Akasha can no longer function as it used to. I've given it some thought and have decided to shut it down permanently. But this is definitely not a bad thing. Even from the beginning, I've been planning to shut it down. The Akasha's centralized administration of knowledge has always restrained people's curiosity and curtailed the number of paths available to them. I don't think this is good for Sumeru. Although people may initially feel a little uncomfortable with the loss of the Akasha, they will soon understand that this life is more suitable for them. And, as for the future of Sumeru, I'm preparing to regain control of the Academia. The former sages have received their punishment, but the new sages have yet to be selected. I will oversee the process personally. I hope that the new six great sages will be more focused on academics. Sumeru needs such leaders more than ever. The other big issue is the people of King Deshret. All the residents of the desert, in fact. They have been mistreated for far too long. I've already taken some measures to address this. It will take some time to rebuild everything. But no matter if it's culture, friendship, or trust, we will rebuild it. You mean... what happened after the doctor put you to sleep? Not exactly. The top-ranked Fatui Harbingers up to number three, possess power comparable to that of gods. I was no match for him in that kind of situation. However, in spite of the bad situation, I still managed to make a fair deal with the doctor. I'm sure you remember the entity that changed your fate, the Heavenly Principles. In fact, the Heavenly Principles has been quiet since the Conria disaster 500 years ago. I used this point as leverage against the doctor. I told him that the Heavenly Principles may be awakened if I destroy the Gnosis. Although it was just a bluff, he still fell for it. I assumed that the Heavenly Principles wouldn't just stand by and let such extensive damage to its laws take place. And as for what I exchanged for the Gnosis? The exchange served as both punishment for the Doctor, as well as a boon of new knowledge that I couldn't refuse as the God of Wisdom. He's still in a coma. I've hidden him like how one would hide a feather. I know you have many misgivings about him, but as someone who had become a god, he has retained a number of very useful features. Don't worry, I'll keep an eye on him and make sure he doesn't do any evil. In addition, there are still some mysteries left in him. Some things may be very clear from my perspective, but he has still yet to understand them himself. His future will be determined by fate. Is that where you're headed next? Fontaine, the Nation of Justice? As far as I know, that nation operates on a judicial system. Does their Archon personally judge people? No, there's a Chief Justice in Fontaine. Generally speaking, the Hydra Archon, Fosalor, won't preside over individual trials. However, even then, Fosalor will still make herself present at just about every trial. It seems that she just likes to immerse herself in that sort of atmosphere. As Archon, she still reserves the right to influence the final verdict. Anyway, let's just say she's got, uh, a very unique personality. Are you sure? Isn't there something else you haven't asked about yet? Huh? You mean... About your brother. While you were resting at Gandarvaville, I took some time to perform an ermine soul search for information on your brother. 
Yeah. Isn't Ermansoul a repository for all the information and memories of Tvat? So there shouldn't be anything on her or her brother. This is true in your case. Ermansoul indeed does not have any information on you. However, there must be something different about your brother. Because as it turns out, the world has recorded information on him after all. What? There's only one possible explanation. He belongs to this world. But... nothing about this makes any sense! Wasn't this your first trip to Tevat? Hmm, according to the records I was able to access, your sibling suddenly appeared in Conria. After the Conria disaster, he began his journey through the Seven Nations of Tevat. But just as his journey was about to reach its conclusion, the Ermansel records on him suddenly become fuzzy. What do you mean, fuzzy? Did something happen to him? All I know for sure is that somebody, for reasons only they can know, is deliberately obfuscating his fate. And whoever it is, if they can do that, who knows what else they're capable of. But even that wouldn't explain how he somehow comes from this world. Something else I noticed was that according to these records, the Fatui have not classified your sibling as one of the Descenders. What's a Descender? Paimon's never heard of it. Look, I'm sure you must be curious about the information I received from the Fatui in return for my Gnosis, right? A very important part of the intel was about this world's Descenders. External beings, ones that don't belong to this world. Traveler, you are Tevat's fourth Descender. Huh? So the Fatui count three other Descenders before the Traveler, and her brother isn't even one of them? That's right. My current hypothesis is that the first Descender was likely what we now call the Heavenly Principles. As for the other Descenders, I still need to verify their existence. It could take me some time. <sighs> Paimon's head's about to burst from all this crazy new information! And yet, even knowing all this, I'm sure you must still have a lot of unanswered questions. I must say, I truly regret that I can't help you more as the God of Wisdom. There are many questions in my heart as well. I will need some time to go through each one of them. And soon, you'll also begin your journey anew and depart from Sumeru. I'm very interested in your future. It's a journey that can't be observed or recorded by this world. If fate is the ultimate knowledge, then your future will be the ultimate fate. Paimon, sure glad we got to meet you, Nahida. The pleasure is all mine. I can't thank you enough. Alright, that's enough talk for today. If you ever miss me, just close your eyes. And maybe I'll appear in your dreams. <laughs> Is there anything you want to know? Hmm... According to the records I was able to access, your sibling suddenly appeared in Conria. After the Conria disaster, he began his journey through the Seven Nations of Tevat. But just as his journey was about to reach its conclusion, the Ermansel records on him suddenly become fuzzy. What do you mean, fuzzy? Did something happen to him? All I know for sure is that somebody, for reasons only they can know, is deliberately obfuscating his fate. And whoever it is, if they can do that, who knows what else they're capable of. But even that wouldn't explain how he somehow comes from this world. Something else I noticed was that according to these records, the Fatui have not classified your sibling as one of the Descenders. What's a Descender? Paimon's never heard of it. 
Look, I'm sure you must be curious about the information I received from the Fatui in return for my Gnosis, right? A very important part of the intel was about this world's descenders. External beings, ones that don't belong to this world. Traveler, you are Tavat's fourth descender. Huh? So the Fatui count three other descenders before the Traveler, and her brother isn't even one of them? That's right. My current hypothesis is that the first descender was likely what we now call the Heavenly Principles. As for the other descenders, I still need to verify their existence. It could take me some time. <sighs> Paimon's head's about to burst from all this crazy new information! And yet, even knowing all this, I'm sure you must still have a lot of unanswered questions. I must say, I truly regret that I can't help you more as the God of Wisdom. There are many questions in my heart as well. I will need some time to go through each one of them. And soon, you'll also begin your journey anew and depart from Sumeru. I'm very interested in your future. It's a journey that can't be observed or recorded by this world. If fate is the ultimate knowledge, then your future will be the ultimate fate. Paimon, sure glad we got to meet you, Nahida. The pleasure is all mine. I can't thank you enough. Alright, that's enough talk for today. If you ever miss me, just close your eyes. And maybe I'll appear in your dreams. Yeah. <laughs>